You know, really the, the first goal is to find the best films that we can. We're always looking all over the world. We've got a great programming team and they really do fan out all over the planet trying to find the best films that we can. We typically uh, want to find a very diverse range of films from different countries. Uh, we've usually, usually got films from about 70 different countries. So we're often seen as perhaps just a red carpet festival, a lot of big Hollywood stars come to town, but that is really just a sliver of what happens in terms of our programming. We've got um, programmers in just about every continent, uh, all year round, looking at films, um, beating the bushes to find the best movies we can. Athens was um, a great uh, discovery because we've been reading, I think, about what's been happening in Greece in terms of the economic crisis there. What's interesting is that there has been a film movement that's sprung up alongside that, or in a way even in response to that. So filmmakers, although they're not always making films directly about the economic crisis, the way that they're making films, the independent spirit they have, is formed in this new uh, set of challenges that they're dealing with. You know, I have enormous respect for actors. It's something I could never do, but I really admire their ability to uh, expose themselves on screen, emotionally, psychically. Um, and I can imagine that if you're an actor and your job is to put on different disguises in a way all the time, that you want a range of things to do. And uh, sometimes those big commercial films, they aren't as rewarding as an independent film. So to see someone like Daniel Radcliffe, who, let's remember, he's the star of the biggest movie franchise in history. And he's doing not just uh, Kill Your Darlings, which is a beautiful US independent film we're showing as a gala, Horns, which is a very kind of disturbing genre film, um, and then also The F Word, which was shot right here in Toronto. So he spent uh, uh, months shooting a movie right here in Toronto from, with the Canadian director, Mike Dennis. So that's very cool that someone like him could do that and step away from that massive juggernaut of, a, of the Harry Potter franchise and do independent films. Same is true with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. He's done The Dark Knight, uh, of course, and, and now he's directing his own film in Don John. And I think it's just great to see that. Uh, actors, I think, when they are um, strong enough and, and uh, willing enough to take chances, they can redefine the pers personas that have been shaped by the, the more commercial movies. Um, Matthew McConaughey is another good example. He'd done so many romantic comedies and very kind of commercial films in Hollywood and in the Dallas Buyers Club. This is one of the most remarkable performances you will see all year and he's, he's going to get a lot of notice for it and we are thrilled to be premiering it. I think we're a big festival. I think we always want to offer something interesting to every audience, every kind of person, there's always a movie that someone will respond to. Um, young people generally tend to love going to movies. Um, often they're fed a diet of fairly conventional commercial films. And those can be fun sometimes, but I think after you know seeing you know monsters and creatures and superheroes for all summer long, you want something a little bit more. We've got something called the TIFF Next Wave Committee, which is a group of high school students who help us um, direct movies that, that they think uh, their peers will like to a teen audience. So we work with them, we do our selection, and then they, we show a lot of the films to them, and they say, oh, you know what, this one is kind of cool enough for our crowd, uh, whether it's you know, the F word or films like that, that they think that uh, a teen audience will like. And, and uh, it's a really valuable insight, because look, I am not 17 years old, so I don't know that like they would. I think anybody who watches Indian cinema knows that it is the most dynamic, boisterous film culture on the planet. There's so many hundreds and hundreds of films being made every year, um, so many different styles, so many different languages that the films are made in. There's a lot going on there. Um, we can only capture a fraction of that, but I think what has been most interesting to us lately is the independent cinema that's coming out of places like Mumbai, where you know, we had a spotlight last year and we were able to introduce our audiences to, in some cases, people like Anurag Kashyap, who they may have only heard of but hadn't seen the films, and, and others. Um, 
And what's interesting in this year's selection is that we can see the echo of that. So um, even our, our most commercial Indian film that we have, uh, Shud Desi Romance, Random Desi Romance, um, which is from Yashraj, one of the major banners in India, and it's, it's aimed at a commercial market. Um, but you can feel the trace of the independent uh, Mumbai filmmakers in this film. They're new kinds of characters. It's a romance, but these are not chaste, uh, virginal lovers. These are people who have had adult lives. They've had romantic relationships. They've had sexual relationships. Uh, they, there's no taboo on kissing. You know, all that kind of stuff is gone. So there's a new generation, even of commercial Indian films, that are responding to what we've seen in independent cinema, and they're just a, they're a little, little more plugged into reality. There's less of the pure fantasy, which I like. And then Irfan Khan, I think, is a great example of somebody who has charted a very independent path in Indian cinema for, for many, many years, um, beginning working uh, with Mira Nair in Salam Bombay in, you know, uh, many, many years ago in a very tiny role. Um, and to the point now where he's a recognizable face all over the planet, you know, have from Life of Pi and, and other films that he's done, um, in Treatment, the TV series, and, and you know, he's, he's had such a varied career. We're going to sit down and talk with him about that and we have the luxury of showing two of his films. The Lunchbox, which is a beautiful film which premiered at Cannes Film Festival and, and we're showing as a gala. And then also um, Kisa, where he plays a Sikh, a very proud Sikh father. Um, and, uh, you know, I just think he's an amazing actor. I, I like the choices that he's made because to me he really is the standard bearer for independence in, in, uh, among Indian actors. And, uh, and so we're, we're thrilled to, to be able to throw the spotlight on. This is my sixth year in this role, and uh, even in that short time, things have changed. I think they will continue to evolve. That's just how the world of film is. Um, so my job is to try to, to observe and keep my finger on the pulse of those changes. Um, but then also I have my own ideas about where I want to see the festival go. One of the things when I started that was very important to me was um, shifting the the emphasis of some of the programming. So we'd always been very strong in North America, Canadian and, and American films. Uh, we've been quite strong in Western Europe, French, UK, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, I've, I wanted to make a real effort to increase our strength in Asia, for instance, uh, uh, Latin America also, um, and Africa. So things like hiring Rasha Salty to hire to, to uh, program films from Africa and the Middle East, that was really important. She's done a terrific job and given us much more presence in that part of the world. Um, I'm now traveling more often in Asia. In addition to India, I'm going to China every year. I was in China three times this year. Uh, I went to Tokyo this, this year almost for one main purpose, to, to try to secure the new film from Hayao Miyazaki, uh, The Wind Rises, which is a fantastic film. It is really one of the most beautiful films I have ever seen. So those things were important and that's what I'll continue to try to do.